Hello, and welcome to today's session. As always, I'm your host, Kevin Grote, Staff Systems Engineer here at VMware. And today we've got another guest. We have a great friend of mine, Mr. Paul Irwin, a Senior Systems Engineer and a Technical Partner Manager here at VMware um, out of the great Chicago area. So if you happen to be up there, be sure to, to look him up and say hi. Paul has put together a really cool uh, VMware Story whiteboard. Now, the, the VMware story is more than just about what VMware thinks is important. Um, the VMware story, I think the way I see it, and the way Paul sees it, and he's going to communicate it to us today, is about identifying how all of the, the different products fit into uh, different places inside of the data center, inside of the long-term vision, not just where customers are today, but where they're going. And so uh, I asked Paul to walk us through a whiteboard that he had built out and to you know, kind of tell us the way he communicates the story. So Paul's done that for us. We've got it here queued up and ready to go for you. So without anything further, let's take a look and join Mr. Paul Irwin as he walks us through the VMware Story Technical Overview Whiteboard. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Paul Irwin. I'm a senior systems engineer with VMware. And today we're going to be spending some time together exploring uh, the, the, uh, the VMware portfolio. And really the best way to do this is to start at the beginning. Uh, you know, to many uh, companies, customers, and individuals, just looking at the VMware portfolio can be extremely confusing. Uh, you know, we, we have technology that spans from the virtualization side to cloud, to management, to automation, uh, and, uh, you know, even as far as virtual desktops. And this can be extremely confusing to understand why VMware has such a vast portfolio uh, available for consumption by customers. So the whiteboard that I'm going to be doing today uh, really serves to help make sense of uh, the technology that VMware has brought to market. If we think about the market, right, the IT industry as a whole, what the IT industry is about and, and, and what we do, right, uh, everything can really be boiled down to one specific uh, entity, all right, and that is the the application. Right? Uh, the the application is fundamentally the most important entity in the IT world. Right? If you are a hardware manufacturer, or if you're a software developer, or if you're an IT admin, your function revolves around doing something with regards to the application. Right? You're either building hardware on which to store the application if you're a storage manufacturer. Or if you're a server manufacturer, you're building hardware on which to run that application. Uh, if you're a software vendor, perhaps you're, you're uh, creating software to protect the application, to uh, back the application up, to interpret data for that application. Uh, uh, perhaps you're even going as far as providing software that can help scale that application. And of course, from an IT admin side, uh, you know, you're there to support those applications, ensure that they're continuously running. All right, that, uh, that you can manage those applications. Because uh, obviously, at the end of the day, uh, without those applications, uh, everything falls apart. So, you know, some would argue that uh, data is more important than an application. Um, my counter argument to that would be, uh, well, without an application to interpret that data, all you have is bits and bytes. So fundamentally, the application is the most important component within IT. And with this in mind, uh, we're going to start our discussion today uh, on the VMware portfolio. And by the time we're done, you'll see exactly where this application sits with regards to the technology that VMware has available. So here, yeah, back in the early 2000s, uh, VMware came onto the scene with virtualization. Right? Historically, you know, we had, uh, we had this notion where a single application would run on a single server, and, uh, you know, you'd have multiple of these single physical servers in the data center, each running their own application. Um, at the end of the day, uh, you know, when you had a look at the return on investment, uh, the capital expense, the operational expense, um, all extremely high. Right? Very poor return on investment, but high capex and opex. Uh, and a lot of inefficiencies involved, uh, involved in, that, in that original way of running applications. So VMware came onto the scene 
and, and you know, fundamentally change the landscape. And, you know, through the use of our hypervisor technology, we were able to abstract the capabilities from, from, from those, those, those hardware platforms, those hardware servers, and share those capabilities up to be consumed by multiple applications running on a single physical hardware platform. Now, fast forward a little further along, we have a look at the second kind of pillar within the data center, and that's the storage tier. You know, VMware uh, uh, also came along and helped change uh, the way we consume storage within the data center. You know, instead of just consuming uh, all applications, being able to consume from the same pool of storage and get the same capabilities that that storage could deliver, we brought about fundamental changes that allow us to get really granular with regards to what applications can consume from the underlying storage. And of course, finally, the networking side, right? Uh, the final kind of pillar within the, the, the foundational core infrastructure of any data center is the network. And, you know, we've been kind of doing networking the same way since networks were, were created, you know, decades ago. Um, you know, and a lot of challenges there really built around the fact that the network is a very rigid infrastructure and it's, uh, because of that rigid nature, it doesn't scale very well and is extremely costly to, to upgrade and to scale. So VMware's changes allowed us to uh, essentially take these foundational pillars within the data center and uh, really apply a virtualization technology across all three of these, these, these physical uh, infrastructure platforms in the data center and allowed us to kind of abstract and pool the capability. On the, on the compute side, we were able to abstract and pool CPU and memory from multiple x86 servers and share them up so that multiple applications can consume from that pool. On the storage side, ultimately what we did is we were able to virtualize the capacity and the capabilities delivered by the underlying storage platform. So now it no longer became a case of all applications had to leverage the same uh, capacity and pool of storage available as long as it was, uh, along with the capabilities. But now we can start getting granular by allowing applications to consume just the capacity that they need from the storage and get just the capabilities that they need that the storage can deliver uh, you know, on a per application basis. And then finally on the networking side, you know, we were able to take the, the fundamental network capabilities that were traditionally delivered by physical appliances within the network fabric. We were able to take those capabilities and virtualize them and, and now have the capability of delivering up your routing and your switching, your firewalling, your VPN and load balancing capabilities all within the software stack. And by ultimately virtualizing and removing the dependence on the, the hardware platform to deliver these capabilities, we've really broken down these hardware silos to allow an application to become a lot more agile right? and to allow an application uh, the freedom to move and migrate within the data center as it needs. No longer are applications uh, deployed based on the physical constraints of the underlying physical hardware within the data center. Now each application has the ability to consume the resources that it needs uh, uh, based upon its function. Because at the end of the day, no two applications are created equal. So VMware fund fundamentally changed this, this uh, traditional kind of hardware landscape within the data center. We still need compute, we still need storage, and we still need the network infrastructure in place. But we've made it a lot easier uh, and a lot more efficient to operate and manage data centers today, and sp specifically around uh, deploying and managing applications and scaling those applications as the business requires. You know, VMware also changed the landscape quite significantly from a management standpoint. You know, early on in the days of virtualization, there were very few management platforms, if any, that were really purpose-built for virtualization of cloud infrastructures. You know, we ended up using a lot of the management tools that we used to manage our physical uh, data center environments. 
and these 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 uh, tools really didn't uh, didn't fit the bill correctly. And if we think about a virtual environment and what it's all about, uh, virtual environments are extremely dynamic. They're consistently changing, um, and no two virtual environments, even if they leverage the same underlying physical hardware, will ever be the same. The consumption of those resources will never be the same amongst uh, amongst those those virtual environments. So we simply cannot reliably use the management tools uh, from from years past to manage these new dynamic cloud-based environments. So VMware came along with a new type of management technology, the technology that not only allows you to see what is currently going on going on within the data center across the compute, the storage, and the network fabric, but also allows you to look at what happened in the past, whether it be just a few minutes ago or a few weeks ago, even, you know, years ago. But the real change came about in that the technology is able to understand the environment and learn about the environment that it is managing, and it's able to start trending the utilization of the environment, how are the resources being consumed. And based on this trended utilization, the management software is intelligent enough to start understanding and being able to determine when, uh, uh, when potential problems could arise within the environment that have not yet happened. You know, an example is based on the trended utilization of disk capacity or the trended utilization of, 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 of memory consumption. The software is intelligent enough to understand at what point in time in the future we could start experiencing constraints on those resources based on how they're currently being used today. And again, you know, the thing to bear in mind is that the utilization is constantly changing. So just being able to look at the environment and take a snapshot as the environment is being consumed today and accurately draw conclusions uh, based on that snapshot is extremely short-sighted. So the fact that this management software is able to continuously look at, look at the environment and continuously manage environment and continuously update its interpretation of how the, the resource is being consumed gives IT um, an extremely powerful tool in being proactive in managing the environment. You know, for probably the first time in history, uh, you know, IT now has the capability to identify a problem and resolve that potential problem before that problem can negatively impact the environment. So gone are the days where IT finds out that there is a major problem in the environment when the problem is happening. VMware also significantly changed the way infrastructure is consumed within the data center. You know, when we brought virtualization uh, onto the landscape, uh, we changed the way and the ease at which um, IT administrators could deploy new service and, and new applications. Um, and it almost became too easy uh, to deploy these applications. But there was still a, and there is still today, a significant amount of, of uh, physical human interaction that is required to deploy a, a server, deploy the operating system and the application and ensure, and it, and ensure that it's, uh, uh, it's functional, right? So before that application can get to production, there's still a number of physical touches that IT has to do to make sure that that, 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 that application is ready. What automation serves to provide is to really automate all of those touch points that IT would otherwise still have to do in this virtual world to the point where we could have line of business or end users go to a self-service portal and through that self-service portal, select the applications that they choose that they would like to deploy, and deploy the applications from that portal without having to call IT or make a request to IT to have those applications or those virtual servers created for them. Now, with this approach, IT still maintains complete control over where that application is deployed to, over the amount of resources that that application can consume. And then from a management standpoint, IT still has complete visibility into how that application is performing within the virtual data center environment. You know, without automation in the picture, um, IT unfortunately uh, uh, tends to uh, 
you know, start start competing with what we call shadow IT. And this is where line of business tend to go outside of the the, the IT environment of uh, of the organization to third party public cloud providers to consume infrastructure from those cloud providers because the cloud provider in general is able to provision up the resources that are quicker than IT internal to an organization can do. So automation not only frees up IT to uh, focus on more important uh, uh, tasks within the organization, uh, but it also uh, prevents the rise of shadow IT within an organization and allows IT to maintain consistency and control over the way applications are deployed and managed within the data center. You know, another, another capability that VMware has introduced into the data center is that of cost visibility. You know, going back to the point that, you know, it's almost become too easy now to deploy applications within the data center, uh, which, is, which is extremely true. Um, but it's also become a problem where, because it's so easy to deploy applications and new virtual servers, uh, we tend to lose track of what, what, what the actual cost is that we're incurring from deploying all of these virtual servers. And the cost visibility is extremely important to allow IT to understand not only uh, how much a particular application might be costing the company to run uh, on, on the underlying infrastructure, but also to understand uh, which, which, which business units within an organization are consuming the most amount of resources within the data center. You know, cost visibility allows IT to not only provide showback capabilities, but also chargeback capability. So now our line of business can be held directly accountable to the cost of the environment based on the amount of resources they're consuming. We call this infrastructure the software-defined data center. And the software-defined data center really uh, fundamentally is just a reference framework or a reference architecture for the next generation of data center. The next generation of data center that really breaks down uh, the barriers between those, those physical silos of infrastructure and allows complete fluidity uh, and, and, and automation um, for, for applications within the data center. And ultimately, the software defined data center approach really serves to provide a platform or an infrastructure from which we can deliver the application. The next part of the VMware portfolio that we're going to talk about is the end user compute portfolio. And the end user compute portfolio really exists to allow end users, ultimately at the end of the day, to access those applications, to provide a predictable experience and a secure experience for end users or remote workers to access those applications regardless of the endpoint that they're connecting from. There are a number of technologies that exist within the EUC portfolio. We have capabilities to deliver up virtual desktops to end users, again, regardless of the endpoint device, whether it be a tablet, whether it be a laptop or a physical computer. We can now deliver up a, uh, a corporate desktop image to those end devices in a predictable, secure uh, way without compromising on uh, on the experience, the end user experience that, that, that users have come to uh, expect. You know, we also have the technology that allows us to not only deliver up those desktops to those end devices, but also secure those end devices, you know? And then based on uh, whether those end devices uh, are secured or not, whether they are corporate owned or end user owned, we can determine based on uh, the management of those devices what content we would like to deliver to those devices. We also provide the capabilities for end users within an organization as well as users across multiple organizations to securely collaborate with one another. Now this is extremely important because the last thing IT wants is for uh, sensitive uh, information relevant to a specific business or, or, or the company to leave the corporate network because as soon as that happens, 
IT loses control over that data, loses visibility as to what's happening with that information. By providing a secure collaboration platform, IT can ensure that the data remains on premise within the data center, and IT can wrap security around that data and provide access to that data in a secure way. Uh, and again, um, based upon who the end user is that is connecting back into the environment, uh, determine what level of access and visibility those end users have to that data in the data center. You know, really the final piece on, on the end user compute landscape is the ability to deliver applications to end users. Again, at the end of the day, everything revolves around the application. If our end users cannot get to their application, they're not going to be very uh, productive at the end of the day. So there's a number of ways for us to ensure that we can reliably and consistently deliver corporate applications to our end users, whether that be uh, publishing specific applications to a virtual desktop and then delivering the virtual desktop up to the end user, or whether that be providing a, a secure web portal that a user can log into to access the corporate-based application or perhaps even allowing the applications to be directly delivered to the endpoint natively. Either way, all of this can be done in a very secure, predictable way. And this really, uh, on a very high level, uh, encompasses the capability of what the VMware End User Computing portfolio is able to deliver. And the whole length and breadth of the portfolio, again, serves to provide users access to those applications running within the data center. We can take the capabilities that we're able to deliver through the software-defined data center reference architecture and extend those capabilities up into the end user computing uh, uh, portfolio uh, as well. And we call this extension of these uh, software-defined data center capabilities up into the EUC space. We call this the software-defined enterprise. So allowing end users to, to connect from any device, from any location, to an application, regardless of the type of application it may be, and regardless of where that application may be running within the data center. The final part of the VMware portfolio really talks about cloud, and public cloud in particular. VMware's uh, public cloud offering, vCloud Air, has a number of uh, specific use cases available to it. And it's all about either infrastructure as a service or disaster recovery as a service. So at its core, it's all about consuming infrastructure from a public cloud provider. But at its center, it's all about providing that infrastructure to applications. Right. And we have this capability or this ability, I should say, to take our vCloud Air platform and connect it back to a customer's on-premise environment and create what we call a hybrid cloud. And through this hybrid cloud capability, we're able to take applications, whether they be traditional client-server applications, or whether they be modern SaaS or web-type applications, and have these applications exist both on-premise and off-premise, or perhaps even have the ability to take these applications and move them between these on-premise and public cloud environments based upon uh, the correct place to run these applications from a cost standpoint, from an accessibility standpoint. Now, this capability is, uh, is very unique to VMware to be able to take an application that is running on-premise move it to the cloud, or perhaps take an application that's running in the cloud and move it back to on-premise, all without having to re-architect the application or convert the application to run from one platform to the other. Fundamentally, the environment that is running on-premise, the core VMware environment, the vSphere environment, is that same core environment that is running and powering vCloud Air. So there is no need to re-architect or change the way these applications are created so that they will run uh, where they're being moved to. You know, this ability gives us a number of uh, capabilities uh, for our customers. 
you know, customers have the ability to take an application that is running on-premise and perhaps scale that application out from on-premise into the public cloud space to consume the resources uh, uh, are delivered by that public cloud entity, vCloud Air. And then when that, when that additional uh, resource consumption is no longer needed, bring that application back on-premise again. Another way from an, an outside-in approach is uh, perhaps an organization is looking to uh, architect and create new applications. They don't necessarily want to consume from the infrastructure that they have on-premise, so they can leverage the infrastructure on the cloud platform, right, and create the application. And then once that application is ready for, for, for consumption by the organization, move the application from the cloud-based entity back to their on-premise data center. Now, you know, some people will say that, you know, a hybrid cloud is simply taking two clouds, or two different types of clouds and connecting them together. And while that may be true in a very, um, uh, very kind of raw sense of the term, to have a true public cloud, or correction, to have a true hybrid cloud, uh, we need to go a little bit further than that. To have a true hybrid cloud means to be able to take the tools that an organization currently leverages on premise, or a tool that an organization currently leverages in their cloud platform and to be able to extend the functionality of those tools across both cloud environments in a way that allows us to view those, those, cloud, those ultimately separate cloud infrastructures as a single uh, entity of, of infrastructure. When IT moves an application or relocates an application from on-premise into the cloud, uh, they should be able to continue to manage that application and understand what it is doing be able to have that predictive analysis information uh, around that application and even around the infrastructure that the application is running on in the cloud uh, to the same degree that they would have should that application be running on premise. IT should also be able to automate the delivery of that application as well as the infrastructure consumed by that application regardless of where that application uh, is running. So that application sh should be able to be made available autonomously that self-service portal both on-premise and in the cloud. And finally, and probably most important, is the ability for the business to understand the cost of running the application in these different uh, uh, infrastructures. What is the application cost on-premise versus what does it cost in the cloud? And being able to understand uh, this information uh, really gives the business uh, a lot more capabilities as to where they should run the application based on how that application is going to be used. We call this uh, um, the hybrid cloud. And the hybrid cloud, again, is really taking a private cloud environment and the VMI's cloud air public cloud environment and connecting the two together but at the same time allowing IT to leverage their on-premise management automation and cost visibility tools from the VMware portfolio to look into and manage the infrastructure that the applications are running on in the cloud. You know, VMware in the past always spoke about private cloud and public cloud, but with the new capabilities that we have introduced to our customers, we now see it as one cloud. One cloud, regardless of where the application is running, whether it's running on-premise in a customer's local data center or on vCloud Air in a, in a public cloud environment, from an IT standpoint, from an end-user consumption standpoint, it's seen as a single cloud. Being able to take any application, right, traditional or modern apps, and being able to move those applications from on-premise to the cloud or vice versa, and not be constrained simply by the way the application has been architected or the type of application that it is. And then finally, allowing our end users or an organization's end users to access those applications from any device that they choose, whether it be uh, an employee-owned device or a corporate-owned device. Being able to have predictive, secure end user experience connecting to those applications and the data regardless of where they're connected from. Thanks for joining today. 
As always, hope you found value in these sessions. Be sure to check back for more roundtables, whiteboards, special guest sessions like you've been seeing here. Also, follow me on Twitter for updates, news, and events as they happen. And be sure to reach out and find out more about VMware Professional Services. We're talking about all of these fantastic technologies and implementing them and making them customized and highly scalable for your environment is exceptionally important to really seeing true value out of, out of your investments. So be sure to reach out to your account teams, your systems engineers, anyone you have, and ask them more about how VMware Professional Services can help you maximize your investment with your virtualization and the rest of your data center. Thanks again. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I look forward to talking to you again really soon.